All right, hello and welcome. I'm Christine Lee with Seize the Market and welcome to our show today. Um, we have a very special guest, Jeff Hupman, and he is absolutely crushing it in his market. And part of that is because he knows how to hire top talent and he is a systems just monster. And I say monster with love and affection, Jeff. Uh, and he knows what it takes to hire top talent and he knows how to make it repeatable and scalable. And so he's going to share all his little dirty little secrets with us. But also, more importantly, the things that don't get talked about, the pitfalls, what not to do. And because uh, we've both been through that. So we have plenty of war stories. We're going to share some of the bloodshed with you so you can at least learn from other people's mistakes. Kind of. But does it make you feel maybe at least like it can go to some good use? <laughs> definitely. Definitely. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. So, Jeff, tell me about what market you're in and what your business looks like. So we're in Savannah, Georgia. My wife and I have a team here. Um, our market, we only have a few hundred thousand people, so we're a small-ish market, not tiny, but small, smaller. Um, we did about 314 units last year and about 75 million in volume, so uh, with a lot of help of good people. So that's where we're at. Awesome. Awesome. And not to mention, you are a valued client of Seize the Market. So we love you. <laughs> and uh, you and I have definitely had a lot of uh, uh, brainstorm sessions on geeking out and uh, just tweaking business systems. So yeah, it's been very helpful to us for sure. And uh, yeah. So when it comes to hiring, you know, you made an interesting comment the other day. And I, that's what I what spurred on this. I'm like, you know what? I think people need to hear this. Yeah. So what were some of your realizations as you started growing, right? It becomes less <laughs> about your production, about what you do, and more about people, getting the right people in place. And that's not a haphazard thing because a lot of people go through and hire the wrong people and become really great at that and then just like it's so frustrated. So hmm. what are some things that you've learned as you've grown your team to close 300 plus you know, units yeah. in a small stinking market, like 200,000 people, right? <clears throat> that's that's pretty significant. Yeah. Um, what is it that you've learned along the way that others should know when it comes to hiring talent and the systems that you built around it? Right. So the, the, fir the first secret to success is uh, marry a really good listening agent. That helps a lot. <laughs> if, 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 <laughs> Note one, no, marry a good listening agent. Yeah, Everybody hear that? Yeah, she's, she, my wife is awesome. Um, and so, you know, I'm very fortunate there. Uh, as, as far as, you know, getting the right people, I think the kind of what spurred our conversation on is realizing as we're getting dozens and dozens and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of resumes is that we have this uh, monster that we need to manage and and it's a good problem to have because the alternative is to not have this monster we need to manage and then we just hire whoever comes in because we have like one or two applicants and we've tried that route before too um, it doesn't work as well right so you know we're just kind of kind of learning <clears throat> that that a lot of this stuff that we've learned at, at Keller Williams um, that they've tried to beat into our heads is actually true, that we have to get tons and tons and tons of resumes. So we look at the teams bigger than us and they say, oh yeah, we get 450 resumes for one good hire. And, and we used to think that was crazy until we found out that it, it works, right? Um, so, so we get lots and lots and lots of resumes now. And, um, and as a result, we need lots of systems to to manage it. So that, that's kind of where we're at. And we've, like I said, like you were saying at the beginning, I'm more than happy to share with you all the things that we've done wrong that that haven't worked. And we can probably get into that at some point. But uh, as many resumes, as many conversations as possible to find the really, really good folks. Yep. And certainly we will get into what's working as well. So we're not going to just all beat up on ourselves. We want to yeah. celebrate our successes. Um, I want to, first of all, start off by defining what I mean by systems. To me, like everything is a system. If it's repeatable, if it's scalable, it's a system. Right. If it's the way you ask questions, the way you talk to people, the way you listen, the way you take notes, the way you then move them to the next step of the interview process, if that's something that you're doing the same way consistently over and over again, that is a system. So um, some people think just because it's not like a check box, it's not a system. But if it's a practice that you want to repeat and scale out mm -hmm. think of it as a system. So I know, you know, you and I were a couple of geeks paired up nicely um, and we think everything is a system. It is. Everything is or can be, should mm -hmm. be. 
And for a lot of agents who are not as much in geek mode, right, um, that are entrepreneurs and know that details is not your thing, I think it's important to appreciate that even as driving non-detailed entrepreneurs, it's still all about building systems in place to help you succeed and get consistent results. You can right. get like shoddy, haphazard, like roll the dice type of results, but who really wants that? Right. Um, and so agents are not naturally detail oriented. So then you need people, you need systems, people who are detail oriented systems that will support your strategies. Um, yeah. And so you mentioned about casting a lot, uh, a lot of resumes, right? So let's kind of go through that. At first you're like, ah, oh, 450. And we're not saying it has to be 450, but yeah. certainly more than one. Right. Yeah, the, the number we've heard a lot, the magic number they say is 100. Like if you don't uh, get 100 resumes before you really try and identify the right person, you're probably just asking for it. You know what mm -hmm, I mean? Mm -hmm. You're probably just asking to get a mediocre hire. So we've seen a lot of different numbers. But for us, more is better. Um, mm -hmm. Most recent hire, we had over 200. And so far, we think we've got the right one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I want to peel back the onion layers on that a little bit. So. I know that when you first say 100, there can be some people thinking, oh my gosh, do we have to talk to 100 people? Right, do we right. have to interview all 100? Right. If that's not what it really is. So can you uh, open that up a little bit more? When you get 100 resumes, then what happens to those 100? Right, So, and this is where the systems come into place, right? Because certainly there's no way that I'm gonna sit down with 100 people and spend an hour with them, right? Because then all of a sudden that's all I do. And, um, so, so, you know, the idea is get 100 resumes. Out of those 100 resumes, there's going to be a whole lot that, unfortunately, are just going to be sloppy. They're going to have typos all over. They're not going to have any relevant job experience. They're going to have a new job every three months, whatever, right? And so we're just going to weed through all those and get it down to a handful, um, maybe 10 or so, that we can reach out to and say, hey, let's do a, a short 15-minute phone interview type of thing. And then from those, we can narrow it down further to maybe five that we'd actually want to bring into the office and meet face to face. Do we do like behavioral profiles like the DISC or the uh, the KPA that Keller Williams offers? There's a lot of different ones out there, but uh, we use those behavioral profiles, and so we'll meet face to face and go through those to narrow it down to a smaller group of maybe a couple that we'll take to the next phase in our process where we really spend some time looking at their. Uh oh. We may have lost them. So I shall continue. <laughs> All right. Um, I think Jeff froze up there, so I'll wait on him to come back. So his point is, is that you may get 100 resumes in, but you're not always going to have to talk to 100 people. From that, you put in hurdles. You put in things that they have to do. They have to either call a line, depending on whether it's an admin or agent. And the way you look at resumes will also be different. If you're looking for an admin who's highly detail oriented and you want that person to be your systems person, well then how spot on do you want their resume to be? Like if it's short, shoddy with spelling errors and the alignment is all over the place, that is gonna be pretty representative of them. If they can't even get a resume together, what does that say about your future admin who's gonna hold your the details of your business together? So you are going to have different criterias because it's associated with different behavioral styles on how you're going to process and kind of judge these resumes. Let me see what, uh, we're having some technical difficulties here. Where's Jeff, our lovely guest? I hope he can make it back here. All right, <clears throat> so the show must go on. So then when it comes to resumes, you yes, you get 100 in, and that sounds like crazy and daunting at first, but then, what really happens is most of them don't make the cut. You know, from those hundred, you're going to get, like he said, 10 that actually go through the interview process. And depending on your lead source as well, right? Um, you're going to get different uh, conversion numbers. So if you're purely pulling from Sphere, then the number of people that actually make it to the interview process, it's typically higher. But if you have something like Indeed, which is, let's call it like mass lead gen, right? Because you know you get like a billion resumes from that. If you get something from Indeed, depending on how much of a filter you put on that, you are going to get a lot of different resumes that come in. Oh, welcome back. Oh, 
Oh, can't hear you. Oh, I can hear you now. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Look, I'm like getting pretty good at sign language. Can you hear me? Hello there. He looks perplexed, so he's not seeing me or he's not hearing me. Oh, I can hear you. Oh, he's calling me. I'm about to start writing on this piece of paper to message him like I'm on a deserted island. Let's see. I can hear you. Can you see that? Oh, he popped off. <clears throat> well, this is certainly a very new experience. Hope you're enjoying this uh, ad-libbing. This was definitely not part of our plans. Oh, he comes back. Oh, my goodness. Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where I lost you guys. Um, <laughs> um, <clears throat> you were talking about you get 100 uh, resumes, and you're not, like, interviewing everybody. And then you're maybe talking to, like, 10 people, and that's right. where you got cut off. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, I, I told, talked about another thirty minutes worth of really good stuff that you guys missed. <laughs> we'll, run back through, we'll run back through the highlights. Uh, so yeah, once you get to about ten folks, then the idea is, you know, maybe maybe those ten phone interviews you narrow down to five people that come into the office, and we use some behavioral profiles. Typically, when people come into the office, a DISC assessment or a KPA, the Keller Williams behavioral assessment. Um, and so we'll go through that with those five people. And then out of those, we'll probably narrow it down to hopefully only two or three that we feel like are really good candidates. We'll have them in maybe for another face-to-face -face meeting and then make an offer to the best person out of that group is essentially how we do it. So we're not talking about face-to-face -face meeting with 100 people. I think sometimes we get that idea in our head when we hear 100 applicants, right? And that's uh, that would be pretty intense. There's probably somebody out there that does it. It's not us. I have talk to about 30 um, at least on the phone this last go round because mm -hmm. we've we've had uh, a little bit tougher time than usual finding that right person but we in order to talk to 30 we had to get 200 resumes just find 30 that were even worth having a, a phone conversation with you know yep and so um, what I've done in the past and you may do the same thing is you know you'll have maybe an admin that you trust that you're you trust to read the resumes and be like toss 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 right. Yep. initial filter again a system right? right you're not doing it and you're still getting work done yourself system correct and then you get the top 30 or whatever uh, right. it's been narrowed down you get to save that amount of time and then you're either calling them and they could even set up the calls for you if you need yeah. everything else is leveraged out yeah absolutely and and so and this is where the systems really come into play either creating a system yourself or having somebody that's really good with systems. So in the past, we've had our office manager, Tara, who has done exactly what she said, gone through all of our resumes and weeded out most of them and then scheduled appointments, gotten the behavioral assessments done, whatever. Um, so she's actually, she's actually been out recently. And so I've had been forced to create some systems on my own, even though I would much rather have somebody else do it. And I've learned that there are a lot of good technology tools to use to organize this stuff. I mean, in the same way that with uh, buyer leads, we can set up automatic uh, email drip campaigns where it will follow up with somebody once a week or whatever. Um, and, and in season market, there's like conditional stuff where once one thing is completed, then another task is triggered. And same type of stuff with um, hiring. I know there's that hiring module in season market that we're starting to use more and more where essentially we can keep up with everybody. Because when you have three applicants, it's no problem. When you've got several hundred, it's a situation keeping up with them. So we've mm -hmm. learned to use that. We've learned to use apps like Calendly. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that one, mm -hmm. where you send a link to your calendar and people can schedule an appointment instead of having to email back and forth with them five times to get a time that works. Um, so yeah, we're, we're learning to systematize everything down to uh, exactly what the email looks like. So we just have templated emails for scheduling or getting the disc completed, scheduling the phone interview, scheduling the face-to-face -face interview. So all the details are in there. We don't have to keep recreating that email. Very simple thing. Um, and, but the more that we have it 
in a very clear, repeatable order, then the less we have to think about it and the faster it goes. So everything, every detail is a system. And so, so we're, like I said, learning to use Seize the Market for more of that because it's good for exactly those types of things. Yep. Um, and what to delve a little bit deeper on it, you know, if you have an agent lead or uh, an admin lead, yep. you know, the questions you ask or the emails that you send or, um, you know, the forms that you might send them might be different. It could be the same. Yep. But if you want to have different conversations or ask them different questions, then you can that can be in an action plan where it says, hey, ask these or this can be in a different operations manual. Hey, yep. ask these questions. Absolutely. Or maybe you have different skills tests. Right. 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 Yeah, absolutely. And that's one of the things that we've learned, too, is with some folks, if we're applying, um, we're collecting candidates for a sales position that's typically a very personable, outgoing type of person, oftentimes not necessarily interested in all the details. Uh, that can be a different expectation with how the whole interview process is managed than somebody that's an administrative person that we need extremely high attention to detail. So when we send uh, an email saying, hey, we want you to do this uh, behavioral assessment and click on this link to schedule the interview and do all this stuff, if somebody is an administrative candidate and they can't do that, they're like gone, right? No questions. <laughs> they can be a buyer's agent and struggle with some of that stuff and they could still be a really good candidate. So you do have to learn how to tailor what you're asking for to the specific role. That's a really great point, because while I was ad libbing when you yeah. got cut out, one of the things I talked about, <laughs> I'm like, the show must go on. Um, I, one of the things I was talking about was the uh, the fact of you would look at resumes differently, right? An admin, you're like very little wiggle room on perfection, so right. to speak, yeah. on what you expect out of the resume, whereas an agent, you have a lot more leeway. Right, right. Yep. Yeah. Because well, that's why agents join teams. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the main reasons because they want somebody else to deal with all that junk. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and so if you're looking for somebody that deals with all that stuff on their own, they may not need to join a team. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Absolutely. So. All right. So then, you know, I think the, the first takeaway is that once you get into mass legion of um, candidates and, and you're recruiting, you know, you're at 100, 200, 300 closings and you want to go beyond to 500 or 1,000 or, or even, you know, your first one. The thing is, is that, you know, if you're using something like Indeed, you're just right. going to get a crap ton of submissions and yep. you got to find a way to qualify that filter that more and more and more and make right. them jump through hoops. Right. Um, how many hoops you got there, buddy? So this is an in, a really interesting question. That's the way we've always been trained to do it is basically make it a challenge to even get to a phone interview. Um, and that's what we've historically done. And I think that's generally a good practice. Having said that, in this last round of interviewing, I've talked to a lot of people and what I found is that a lot of companies do what we're talking about and create a lot of obstacles and some candidates will uh, just get exasperated with every single time they put in an application that they have to go through a whole bunch of stuff before they get to talk to a real person and they kind of feel like they're just wasting their time. So, so we've actually tempered that a little bit. We certainly do expect them to you know, complete the disk assessment and complete it for us. It's at least two hours before the, inter the phone interview and um, that they schedule their own phone interview at whatever time and, and that obviously they have to show up for that. That's a big one. And we have some people that don't. Um, that's usually not a good sign. Um, but anyways, so we have, we have had, we have certain things that we expect. We also have learned to have a little bit of, to be a little bit proactive on our side. If it's somebody that we're interested in to reach out to them because somebody else is reaching out to them and bypassing some of those hoops if it's a really good candidate. So there, there's a balance in there. Mm -hmm. um, but but yeah, for starters, we tell them where to apply. They have to apply on our website. Um, and we kind of tend to throw resumes out when they just like email them to us or send them to us some other way. Mm -hmm. uh, because they didn't read the instructions, right? right. Um, and we make sure that they complete the disk assessment. We make sure that they're able to use the link in Calendly to schedule the appointment. Um, we make sure that aside from all the other stuff we look at in the resume that we screen out. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we, we do some things to, to weed people out for sure. Yeah. Um, what I did on my team is by the time, because we got, again, so many resumes that you kind of then have the right 
to put a bunch of hoops in place or you can, right? You have the ability yep. to do that. And by the time they made it to the end, we're like, dude, they wanted it bad. <laughs> totally agree. Totally agree. That I agree with that, that philosophy. Totally. We were in desperate need of people. So we were being a little more proactive than normal, but mm -hmm. I agree with what you're saying. Yeah. And you're right. As, as you have the needs and you know, I know I'm this way when I'm like, Oh, I got to lower my hoops. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, I didn't start planning soon enough, right? It's usually because. That's right. And so, um, all right. So systems, systems, systems. And I'll give you, uh, I'll throw in another kind of idea there. If you're making people jump through hoops and you don't want to lose like the quality people, mm -hmm. one of the things from a systems perspective that can be done, let's say, for example, agents, right, or, or admin. If you had two different email sequences that just kind of drip them and say, hey, you know, and just do like value added stuff like why it's great to be on the team. And it can be like really short things, but it keeps them warm. And it's like, oh, I was going to give up on the Hutman team, but oh, well, here's a here's a success story or here's the reason why I want to be with them. Yeah. That might <clears throat> bring them back and it's all automated, you know? Yeah, yeah that's, that's a really good point. And that's something that, that's kind of our, our next evolution in this whole hiring process is to figure out how to build a database in the same way mm -hmm. we have a buyer or a seller database. Mm -hmm. Then we have a database of people that have applied so that we can stay in touch and drip on them so that we have a like kind of a pre-ready uh, database of potential applicants instead of starting from ground zero mm -hmm. with no resumes every time. Yeah, exactly. And let me tell you how beautiful this can be, because um, when I uh, with my system right now, both in the buyer and seller leads, you know, when you have a really great system going and like right now it's hands free. I don't even do anything with our buyer leads because, you know, that's not the business that I'm in anymore, but I still have the side up. It's still generating leads like all the time. And I'm right. like, go. And now that's a whole different story, but same thing with recruits. It's yeah. generating all that stuff because I built this system. I'm like, right. I can't even shut it off. If I, I literally have to shut the site down, but imagine, you know, if you're actually wanting them, how amazing and productive right. that yeah. is. Yeah. And I think the other part that's really good about that is, you know, we have what typically happens is we say, oh, goodness, I need somebody like right now. So now I'm going to post an ad on Indeed or Monster or Craigslist or wherever the heck we're posting them. Um, and then that's kind of where we're starting from. And what we're typically going to get, not always, but typically going to get in that situation is somebody that needs a job. They don't have a job. They need a job. Mm -hmm. um, we can find occasionally good candidates that way. However, it's not the strongest candidate pool. The strongest candidate pool is somebody that's doing a good job somewhere mm -hmm. and is looking for a bigger opportunity or something closer to home or what a different cultural environment, whatever. And so mm -hmm. when we build a database where we can put people in that are people we want to stay in contact with, that we're mm -hmm. interested in, mm -hmm. um, that are not people that are just like desperately looking for a job because they couldn't keep the last four jobs they were in. Mm -hmm. uh, different pool of candidates. And so when we can create a pool of people that we want to be in communication with and drip on them using those mm -hmm. systematic emails, let them know what's going on with our company, with our culture, whatever, then uh, that that's a whole different type of database to be following up with when we need help. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Um, now, the third takeaway is I want to get into the interview process. A okay. little bit okay. and what you've experienced now that okay we touched on the fact that you need to have systems and it's the first of all that it's like lead gen you know um, yeah. once you get into a certain level of business or even your first hire you got to treat it like legion you got to get leads they convert you dial them down and yeah. then they become an, a viable candidate and then uh, the actual part about casting a wide net and having systems right then now let's go into now that they're in front of you what are some takeaways what not to do and what to do in right. that category. Yeah. So, so the, the one that I think is the most challenging for a lot of times for real estate agents is real estate agents become successful by being good with people. They're good at sales and they relate to people. And that's how they get successful enough that they need to hire people. So when they start hiring people, a lot of times they treat it the same way as when they're trying to sell a house, like they're building rapport and they're like, Oh yeah, my kid goes to the same school as yours, and you know. Do they have that same pitch oh, yeah, too, we, of voice? What's that? Do they have that same pitch of voice that you just did? Yeah, that one right there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, they they start like relating to them, and and there's nothing fundamentally wrong with that. But a lot of times, uh, and we've done this, we uh, we like people, and we build rapport with people, and then we fall in love with somebody, and then we hire them, and we kind of checked out on 
paying attention to whether or not it was the right person. It was just somebody we liked and we missed it. They weren't the right person for the role. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? So you have Absolutely. to always maintain some objectivity and make sure that we are uh, looking for what the role requires and specific examples of when they've done that. Because, you know, somebody shows up for an interview that are going to tell you they can do everything. I uh, love a fast paced environment, but I'm very relaxed. I love working alone uh, and in large teams of people. Like, you know, I get this all the time, right? I, uh, and, and we have to realize like, there's probably some superhuman person that can do everything, but we haven't run into him yet. People oh, like, yeah. there. <laughs> okay. I'd like one, please. <laughs> Um, but, you know, people tend to either be good uh, working with people all day long or working on computers or, you know, behind a desk all day long. Very rare that somebody can be equally happy in both. So we have to understand what people are like and using behavioral profiles and also by asking them situational questions like, uh, in this type of situation, when have you found yourself in a situation where you've uh, worked without any people interaction for an eight hour day? Where, as opposed to, do you like working with people or are you okay working on your own? Because they'll all say, yes, I'm okay with either, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, well, when's the time when you worked uh, for eight hours without any people interaction? And then maybe they'll tell you, when's the time when you worked for a whole week on your own behind a computer? And then you start to get a feel for, okay, did somebody actually do that? And then did they actually like it, right? Mm -hmm. So filling mm -hmm. into what they've done, not just what they want you to believe that they could do. <laughs> no, that's a really good point. And then as you ask, what are your preferences, right? Right. And um, tell me your feedback on this. I found that the higher the level of talent and the higher level of awareness, they'll be very clear and unashamed of yeah. what they prefer and don't prefer, right? What they like and don't like. Absolutely. Yep, yep. The people that are more experienced, more talented, uh, usually they have, they're usually a little bit less concerned about selling you on why you have to hire them because they know they can find another opportunity. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they're going to be more direct with you about what they want because they're trying to find the right thing for them, not just any opportunity. Whereas the person mm -hmm. that really needs a job, they'll tell you they can do anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so I mean, you, I, or many of the folks that are watching, it's like, you know, we're all entrepreneurs, we're business leaders. So if we had to go be somebody's employee, you know, it's like, we know we could probably do that with our eyes closed all day long. So we're not going to have to beg for a position in terms of knowing that we can get stuff done. So we're going to be picky about the opportunities that we look at. And that's the same thing as top talent that wants a an employed position. Yeah. Um, yeah. They're very clear. on You'll see a very difference in attitude and, and certainly not cocky, just confident right. and, and self-aware. It tends to turn into more of a conversation than an interview. And that's a mm -hmm. good thing when it turns into not just me saying, can you do this? Can you do this? When did you do this? Are you capable? Uh, it turns into more of a conversation about, well, this is kind of what we're like and how we do things here. And then they're saying, well, you know, I used to do this and, and this is really what was my challenge with it. And what I'm really looking for is this. And then you start to figure out, okay, are there some synergies here that make sense? Mm -hmm. And those honest conversations are usually the most valuable ones. And those are when you know you have good candidates, when they're like, you can tell they've had some experience. They know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. And even with admin, where you wouldn't typically expect them to be very super proactive or pushy on anything, and this is not a pushy thing, but they're so clear on what is really an ideal scenario for them that they will ask about it. Right. Yep. And I love it when I hear them, you know, asking me questions and right. saying, well, how do you handle this? Or is this this? And they're kind of going through their questions of preferences and checklists that they would want in a job. Yep. And that to me, you know, certainly uh separates them from the rest that just kind of like, please, I want to please, please, please you. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And along those lines, one of the things that we like to do early in our process is ask you, well, how did you find the, how did you find out about this position that we're uh, hiring for? And then what's your understanding of the position? What's your understanding of our company? And you'll find some people will say, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't indeed. I was just applying to every single position. They don't actually say that, but you can tell that's what they did, right? And some people will say, "Oh, well, I went on your website and I read about you guys and I read some reviews and I saw the, you know, on your blog the pictures of your client parties." And then you realize, okay, that person is intentional and they're looking for a real job that they can fit into, not just any job. Right. So definitely understanding some per a person's level of interest and level of concern is important. 
Okay, cool. Awesome. Um, another point that you made before is that uh, the number of candidates that you want to be able to choose from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, expand on that a little bit. Yeah, well, I mean, I'll tell you just from firsthand experience that we were in a spot where we had uh, one of our folks uh, leaving as actually our photographer was moving out of town. And that's pretty important. I mean, if we, we carry 50 or 60 listings at a time, and so in a given month, we might take 20 or 30 listings, something like that. So if we don't have somebody to go take photos and drop off the lockbox and put a sign in the yard, we've got a problem fast, you know what I mean? <laughs> because the whole like thing just kind of like blows up. So we needed somebody and we needed somebody really fast. And we were interviewing, I talked to just a few people and I had somebody that like, I wasn't that excited about, but we just kind of needed somebody. I was just this close to hiring them. And I just heard this little voice in my head from being at all these training classes that Keller Williams offers. Like you need to, you know, interview enough people to know you've got the right one. And, and I went just a little bit further and um, interviewed a few more people. And what I found is that that first person that I thought was like, okay, like they could probably do it. By comparison, the person that came around just a couple interviews later was night and day better. She's been with us for uh, a couple, uh, about a year and a half now, and she has been one of the best hires we've ever made. I mean, she is one of the most team oriented, hardworking, easygoing, just like does whatever, always positive attitude. And we were just this close to missing her because we were just impatient. You know what I mean? And so just by waiting a little longer, we did get a good hire. But what happened is we knew she was a good hire because we had a point of reference. We knew what the okay hire looked like compared to her. But when we didn't have her, this okay hire was the best we had. And so she looked better than she probably was. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. And so it's amazing what we as human beings will do to justify something when we're in pain or in need. Right. So when you have one versus three candidates. And now when we say have another candidate, it's not have a candidate that's worse so you can justify this other one that's not as good. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's three candidates. I, this is the ideal situation, right? And granted, it doesn't always work like this um, right. or turn out like this, but this is what you should strive for. Having three candidates that you're excited about, all of them. Yep. And so now you're picking like the creme de la creme. Absolutely. That is the and, ideal scenario. Yep. And in other versions, like you talked about, is there might be one that's like great, another one that's okay. But mm -hmm. yeah, it shines the light on who's okay and who's not. Cause I've been in that exact same situations. You're like, yeah, no, I think they'll be fine because that should work because it's okay <laughs> because, right? No, soon, not okay. Yeah. As soon as you start saying, I think they could probably do the job, like you need to run, but like, you need somebody, you're like, they're going to kill this job. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. If yeah. it's a, I hope I'm pretty certain, like your level of certainty is a five out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> not good <laughs> you're like yeah let's hire them let's pull the trigger it's a five out of ten right and, and we laugh about it but we like anybody that's hired more than one or two people has done that you know what i mean we like we've all done that at some point and so for anybody out there that is like making their first hire like learn from us and don't do that you know it, like we've all messed it up like don't don't do that interview oh to you, a good person uh, so for entertainment value, would you like uh -huh. to share some of your worst hires? Oh, goodness. Um, oh, goodness. Um, <laughs> you laugh. The uh, one you're laughing about, give me that one. Right. Well, yeah. I, <laughs> I, I don't. I, I would love to. However, I won't because <laughs> I have no idea who will watch this. <laughs> um, or, keep, 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 okay, I'll, I'll go. I don't I know any crackhead. Make it anonymous enough. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm keeping it. I'm not calling out any names. I heard a crackhead, and um, oh, did I freeze up? Hello. Oh, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I heard a crackhead that uh, because again, one of my first few mm -hmm. hires, I loved her. She had great energy, super sharp. I even checked gosh darn references. Anyways, don't get me started. Man, put me through an emotional roller coaster. I thought I was doing something wrong. And then typical, like, and I haven't dealt with, you know, somebody who was addicted to anything before. Yeah. And nobody told me she was coming out of something. Um, but she right. was super sharp, right? One of those super sharp people. So I, yeah. 
have a drama story every single time. I'd be like, oh, I'm like crying a river in my heart. And I'd, you know, give her a check. Oh, she needs money for this. And I should have known when she was hiding her car in our parking lot. That should have been a clue. Oh, wow. So. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty extreme one. That's tough. That's really <laughs> tough. Wow. <laughs> we so. haven't had that one yet. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, do drug tests. How about that? <laughs> do background checks. That's a good idea. I mean, we, yes, we learned to start doing background checks because early on we had somebody apply and they were just telling us stuff that didn't add up, didn't mm -hmm. make sense. We did a background check and then we started figuring out that and it wasn't like some huge criminal thing. It was just like there were pieces of the story that we were being told that didn't line up with mm -hmm. what was actually going mm -hmm. on. So yeah, yep, background checks for us have been important. And let me tell you what, um, okay, on that note, I hired somebody that I sh didn't do a background check on, right. and um, I had about you know what, forty grand or something. I forget how many tens of thousands of dollars stolen. You know, yeah. So you have to That's go through that whole legal process. Right. And yeah. And in addition to background checks, it's probably worth considering doing uh, credit checks for people that are going to be handling money in any capacity. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. So the simple ones are background checks. There's really cheap online sources. I can't emphasize that enough. Yes. Yeah. Um, and uh, seriously, because um, once I went through that process, I was mm -hmm. told that um, from a reality statistical standpoint, that the people who steal money are the people that you would never expect. Like the typical response is, oh, my gosh, I would have never thought that person would do that. I trusted them for so long. It's like the close people. And so that is extremely common. Yeah. So I say this with just like hopes mm -hmm. that this can save you a lot of heartache. Just do background checks. Even you saying that you'll do background checks will right. ward off the people that know that won't make it. Yeah. Yeah. And I've, I've had, and this is similar to, um, you know, we have some rental properties and we do background checks there as well. And a lot of times just by telling somebody you're going to do a background check, they will tell you about stuff that doesn't even show up on the background check. Because they'll like start defending it up front, like, well, there was this one time and, you know, it was just this, this thing happened and, you know, they'll start telling you and then you get the background check back and it's not even on there. But, oh people, my. you know, they, they, um, they start thinking about it when you just tell them you're going to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So hopefully those are some <clears throat> several, uh, we had more than several great takeaways. We had several categories with like bunch of nuggets in all of them. But hiring talent uh, is really, think of it in terms of systems. Think of it in terms of how can I make this repeatable, scalable. And Jeff, you've certainly done that. Um, and it's a it's a beautiful thing once you get it down. And you constantly tweak it and refine it. But once you do like the, the biggest items, then mm -hmm. the rest is just fine tuning. And you're always going to be messing with it. There's always better ways to refine your system. Yes. But hiring is a, a system, whether it's one or whether it's 10 hires. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And it's one of the most important systems. You know, we um, at, at the end of the day, the one thing we have a limited amount of is time. And the only way we can get more time is by hiring other people. Right. Mm -hmm. By borrowing somebody else's time or paying for somebody else's time. So it's it's super important to, to figure out how to get the right people because it changes everything. It does. And one bad hire can just make you want to just crawl into a hole and shrivel up. Yeah, right. And so I think we've all had that. Um, so uh, for those of you who are listening, if you are interested in growing your team the right way and want the right strategies and systems to really take it to the next level, and if you want to have an honest conversation on where your business is at now and where you'd like to be and how to close that gap, let's talk. Go to seizethemarket.com slash talk. That's seizethemarket.com slash talk. And we'll delve deep into your business and see what's working, what's not working, and really get you a game plan to take it to the next level. So you don't have to work harder. Work smarter, man. If you want to work harder, that's up to you. But work smarter for sure. And you'll find that there is like a whole fortune to be had in your business that's just slipping through the cracks. Some of you guys know it. Some of you don't. Um, and today's topic is that fortune is in finding the right hires and having a system to do that. So, Jeff, thank you so much for joining us. And cheers to all the future conversations we'll have geeking out and helping you uh, take it to the next level. <laughs> Talk to you later. Thanks. Bye. Bye.